then I'm going to try and see if I can provide an accurate tutorial here for Milk Shape. This is Milk Shape right here in case you can't tell. Um, hope this isn't too far away. I'll try and zoom in on any parts that you can't see. So I'm going to enter it. Um, most of my settings are already there so I don't actually have to change them but I usually check anyway. So um, first thing I'm going to go do is I'm going to go into file. I'm going to open it needs to get smaller. Um, I'm going to try and find, let's see, whatever model I want. So let's work with the female model. Those are usually uh, easy enough. So uh, right now uh, I want to go to File and then Preferences. So I go all the way up there and then I go to Preferences. And I have to go to miscellaneous tab, um, it's not here on the first tab, but you go over here and then you can see joint size right about there. And it tells me that I'm where I need to be. Again, most of my settings are where they already need to be, which is at 0 0.006 uh, thousand, I believe. Yes, 6,000. And I click OK and just leave it as it is. Right now you can tell that my uh, skeleton in two screens or two windows, whatever, they're red. You don't want that. So, um, if the skeleton is red, um, I need to go to edit and then select none. That way they are, uh, back where they need to be. This is good. Uh, if you're wondering why my first window is 3D and not like the other two, that wasn't me. Someone else got on my computer and asked, hey, can I learn how to make an animation? And I said, sure. And I looked away for two seconds, and before it was over, somehow this one was 3D. So don't worry about it. They should really, you know, mostly, for the most part, I, all three of them should look the same. It doesn't really affect anything, but okay. So uh, now that my skeleton is not selected, I'm going to go all the way down into the animate button. It's all the way down here in the bottom right corner. I hope you can see it right there. I'm going to go ahead and click it. And uh, again, it changes everything. Before it was kind of like white dots everywhere, but when you click it, everything should go uh, gray, like gray spider webbing. This is good. You want that to happen. So once you click uh, animate, you want to go to the select button. Uh, don't be freaked out if my uh, directions are a little bit out of order. I'm using my handwritten directions right now, so uh, it may vary a little. So I go to select. I make sure that down here, in this section it's set to joint. We're going to go ahead and just select one on the skeleton. Now this part is important. You can only do one at a time. If you do more than one it doesn't work. It just does weird things so in the long run you want to make sure that you only select one so that only one red dot appears. If you have more than one just reselect it. It's not going to hurt anything to uh, do it several times. Like if I do this you don't want to do that. So you're just going to find one, find one joint that you want. You're going to go ahead and select it. And then you're going to click on rotate. And you have to have it on origin and local. If you do not do that, again, weird things happen that aren't supposed to happen. So once they're on origin and local, um, again, my directions are out of order. I go to animate and it should be set so that it is on for operate on selected joints only. This obviously ensures that, you know, what I'm messing with is the only thing that gets um, messed with. Like, the head doesn't explode or something. So, alright. Now we can start rotating. Whee, there's an arm. Yay. Uh, for the sake of being simple, I'm not going to do much. I'm going to go back to select. I'm going to select an another arm, another shoulder, whatever. I'm going to bring it this way gonna bring it this way and uh, yeah that's fine okay so I've done that this is just to prove when everything is all said and done that the anim well the pose I'm gonna just do a pose here to prove that the pose worked okay so I have gone as far as I want to go I know this doesn't serve any you know visual purpose right here. This doesn't look very good as a pose, but this is just a tutorial, an example. By the way, you can use the little 
little roller thing on your mouse right here in the uh, fourth screen in order to uh, zoom in and out. Now that I'm done here editing the pose, I'm going to go to edit, then I'm going to select all. Your skeleton uh, will go back to normal if you click, so if you didn't mean to do that, don't worry about it. You can just click here and it'll go back. But go ahead and go edit, uh, select all again. Uh, your skeleton should be green, red mesh around it. That's cool. Alright, then go to uh, animate set keyframe. Now you should have a red mesh and yellow. If your colors are not like that, something's wrong, okay? And you need to go back through the steps and make sure you followed them exactly. Otherwise, if you've got weird colors here and there, it indicates that something is off. Alright, so this means your first keyframe is saved. Uh, regularly, if this was just a pose, this is where you'd leave it. If you were going to do an animation, this would just be the first frame of your animation and you'd go from there. But for the sake of simplicity, just trying to get this to work, we'll just leave it as a pose. So, um, I always just uh, go ahead and put down uh, the number 30 down here in these bottom two corners. You see that right there? Right there. Yes. The last two boxes put 30 in that. That's going to indicate uh, the very last one tells you how many total frames you have. And the one next to it says the max frames. The one past that will tell you the current frame. Well, you could just click on this or you can just type in 1. And that indicates right now I'm on frame 1. So there I am. And you can see as you move off of the first uh, set keyframe, that though you do keep the red meshing, uh, the skeleton turns green, this is totally fine. All that means is that right here, uh, this is a set keyframe. Right here, the whole skeleton is um, set on select all. And if you were going to do an animation, normally you would go select none and repeat from the very beginning. But uh, just for right here, we're going to go ahead and uh, move on and save it so that we make sure that uh, you can see how I save it. So we're going to go to File, then we're going to go to Export. Go down this really long list of stuff that I don't know anything about. And you're looking for Sims 2 Animesh Anim Exporter version 1.01. .01. Don't get that confused. If there's a Unimesh exporter, you, uh, you don't want that. So click on this. This is going to pop up. So, um, I don't know. I'm just going to name it name. Yeah, because I can't. Uh, name. Great. And uh, I'm not going to give it a second. You don't need, like, two words in your name. Just keep it there. So, I save it right here. Uh, you have an anim type. Let's make sure you can see this. Um, Your anim type must be set to um, body overlay. And your locomotion type must be set as pose. Right there. And you can see right here the length. I always keep it at 4000 just as a rule of thumb. And then I click export. Boom. There it is. And that's about it. Um, yes. So later on if I wanted to I can uh, go to documents and if I scroll around this is it right here right there it's a .5 AN file uh, that's exactly what it should be if it's anything else uh, you're exporting it with the uh, wrong option so that's the first step as far as um, milk shape goes uh, try to do it exactly like that and uh, just focus on a pose for the first one would be the absolute best because those are the easiest. Um, I can do one for an animation but um, I didn't even try that until much later on. I didn't even try that um, due to the fact that it can get confusing pasting and copying keyframes if you're not very familiar with this. and. Um, it's a lot better uh, you can get through it one time with a successful pose before you get too heavy into the um, animations. 
And by the way, when you close out, it's going to say that your model has been modified and it's going to ask me if you want to uh, save it that way. And you're going to tell it no. You do not want it to do that. Uh, I don't know how I figured that out. It must have been in the tutorial somewhere. But I pretty much assume that if you say yes and you go back in, it's going to save your skeleton from then on until eternity in whatever pose you exported it as. So every time you go in, it's going to be in a weird pose, not just the anatomical position, which is the easiest to start your pose from. So always click no when you leave. Um, so yeah, there it is. Uh, hope you have a little more success with that. And uh, tell me if you have any further problems.